So in this last video of the series, um, what I want to do now is take our song that we've created in the song mode, so the patterns that we've put into the song mode, we want to record that out now via the USB into our DAW. So on this occasion I'm using Ableton Live and uh, what I'm going to do is set this up so that we can receive the signal from our Digitact into our DAW. Now the good thing about Digitact is that you can transfer audio via the USB. So, so this is this USB is connected up to my computer via Overhub. Now Overhub is a device um, that the Digitact is made for really with using uh, Overbridge. So Overbridge allows you to use all the functionalities of the device um, over USB. So I've connected that up to my Overhub device, which my Overhub device is then connected to my MacBook. Alternatively, what you can do is just connect your USB up straight into your MacBook and it should it should work exactly the same. You can um, check if you've got a connection by going on to your uh, Overbridge engine just to make sure that it's, um, it's basically connected, but it should be fine. So what I want to do is go over here to this um, percentage bar and then configure audio. If I click on that, it brings up our preferences. Alternatively, if we wanted to go to um, another way to get to our preferences is we will click on live in the top left and then click on preferences. This brings us up to basically our preferences page. What we want to do is obviously go down to where it says audio and then it says audio devices. I've got it set up at, at the minute. So the driver type is our core audio, which is obviously I'm using Mac. So our input device is the Digitact um, in and because I've got this set up in a way, I'm going to be using the Digitact as my output device so we can listen to it after we've recorded. My sample rate I've set to 128 samples because my backbook can I could set it even lower than that, but I think 128 is alright. Within our DAW, we have uh, either a MIDI channel or audio channel. So we want audio channel. So I'm just going to delete, well, I'm just going to delete three channels so we have one audio channel. So when we say we want audio from, we want this top down menu here to be an external input. So the external input meaning it's from an external device. And then we have all these choices here. If we don't have these choices, all we have to do is go down to configure and then we can configure the input. So if you don't see any, none of these will be ticked. So it will basically... be nothing. So we want all the mono inputs to be selected. So one, two, that's his main output. So we don't really need that. But from track one to eight, that starts from three. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nine and 10. So there are his eight tracks. I'm just gonna click on them all and our stereo inputs. This will be exactly the same no matter what DAW you're using. You could be using Logic Pro or Cubase or whatever. It'll, it's the same principle that works with it. Um, so with this first track, I want this track to be number three. So that's my kick. I can double check that it is my kick by having track one. If I just come out of song mode a minute and then I know that this track number one, that's my drums. I can then pull this menu down and just double check that it is number three. You'll notice that it has one and two as well because that is our main output. So this is gonna be track number one. So all I'm gonna do is rename this, relabel this by right clicking and then clicking rename and then just put track one. And then what I want to do is I want to just duplicate this uh, seven more times. So I can either do that by right clicking and then press duplicate or I can use a shortcut which is command and D 
or on Windows, I think it's Control and D. So I'm just going to do that seven more times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to rename each track to its corresponding track. So now them are all labeled as each individual tracks and the only thing we have to do then is create each track to the corresponding input coming in. So this is going to be number four because uh, this one here, we can see that we've got that there. We're not, I don't think we use that throughout but I'm going to record the full lot anyway. Um, and then we go five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And if we look on this part here, this section here, what I'm going to do is press each track on the uh, Digi Tap. So this is track one. We can see that we're getting track one on here. We're getting input there. Track two, we're getting input. Track three, track four. Track five, track six, track seven, and then track eight. So we're getting all the inputs now. So before we record it, the audio coming out of the uh, Digitax I think is minus 12 dB. So in order for us to compensate for that, we could go into our settings, go to audio, uh, routing and then it says USB to main now I'm not sure if this is per track or if it's just to main but what I'm gonna do is just add 12 dB again you've got three different well four different values you can have 0 dB plus 6 plus 12 or plus 18 I'm just gonna have on plus 12 so now we've got our eight tracks set up what I want to do as well is just add another track and this track is gonna be labeled as main FX. So this track will be our one and two. This is where our effects track will come into our DAW. But first, we just need to dive into the settings and change a few things. So if we go into the settings page, I'll just come out of this, go back into the settings page, we want to go down to audio routing, press on yes, and then it says root to main. Now, all these tracks that are green will be routed to the main output but we don't want these tracks uh, one to eight to be routed to the main audio output because we're recording them individually. So all I'm going to do is just deselect these first eight tracks. So this means that the delay and the reverb will now be only routed to the main output. This is the same with the send effects. Um, I want to keep them on because I want to send all these tracks and the delay track uh, to the reverb. Um, which will then be routed to the main. Um, I've also set up the USB to main dB, so it's given as a 12 dB increment, and I have set my routing to be post fader. So the only thing left to do now is to arm all these tracks so that we're ready for recording. So I'm just gonna click on track one, hold shift, click on track eight, and then click on the record arming button and I'm going to start this going because uh, it's going to give me a bar intro coming in and then I'm going to start playing so if I just click on that press pause I don't know if there's a way to actually record I always have to do it like this press stop record stop record and then stop record and then on our digitat this is now ready for it to I have audio come in. I'm obviously now in song mode, but if we're not, we just click on this button and press yes. We've got a sequence fully ready to be set up. So now all these tracks are ready, they're armed. I'm going to press spacebar and then I'm going to press play on my Digitax. That is then going to record all this audio into our DAW via the USB. So you'll notice all we're hearing is the effects, but don't be worried about that because the, we're listening to the main output. Um, what we're bothered about is that 
in our DAW that each track is recording which it is. So I'll speed this video up um, and then we'll come back after we've recorded everything. So now we have taken our digitact, we have recorded each individual track along with the effects that have been routed through the USB into our DAW. So there's just a few little tweaks that we need to do. Um, when we went to the settings page and we went to USB to main, so this only applies to the main output, this doesn't apply to each individual track. So what I need to do to bring this up to level because I set that to plus 12 I need to select each one of these tracks and increase this gain by either 12 or I could bring this level down by minus 12 depending on which way around you wanted to do it now if we start to play this back we will start to hear the song as it is on the digitact plenty of headroom to do whatever we want to do with it. that is how we can get audio from our song from the pattern that we've that we've basically the songs that we've produced from our digitact into the computer so i just quickly wanted to show you as well how you set this up in logic pro i've got it set up here but all we do to do this is we set up a new uh, file by going to file and new it will then bring up this window here to create a new track um, and all we want to do is click on audio and then what I did is because I know our our first track which is um, this one is going to be on input 3 I basically started that from input 3 and then I added 8 tracks because we have 8 tracks and did them in an ascending order so when we uh, applied that it basically had number input 4 that was number five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 is track eight on the Digitact. I then went and added a new track, but the input, because our main input is one and two um, on, via the USB, I then um, just created a new track and put that into number one and two clicked on OK so then we have our inputs here what we do then is we just basically select all the tracks and then command and R to arm all the tracks and then we can just double check that we've got it so this is track 1 track 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 and you can see that we have our effects that are just been sent on the output via that we can also dive into the delay page and then just increase the feedback just to make sure that we're getting it and then that is now ready to be recorded so what i'm going to do is just press record and then press play on my digitact And then that is how we record this in. Uh, if you wanted to listen back to that, that is how we do that. Ideally, what we'd also want to do is just to bring the tempo down before we record. Um, that way we will be in the same tempo as uh, our actual project on the Digitact. So we can just do that again. If I just press this.
So I won't play all that through, but that is just basically the example of it. We're only getting the delay um, and the reverb or the effects on that output, but when we play it back, um, it will basically play the full lot. Turn off the metronome. Ideally, on these tracks, we want to increase this volume by 12 dB or decrease this effects track by minus 12 dB. So that's how you get your audio into Logic Pro. I mainly use Live, but I also uh, use Logic Pro as well. Um, but yeah, that's how you get it into Logic Pro. What I would tend to do with this now is just to maybe see on each of these tracks just to make sure that everything is going to be all right, is make sure that it's all in its own balance, in its own place. So I'd do this basically, this is a tutorial in itself, um, but I'd basically select all my tracks then, click on the tab button in the uh, arrangement view, go up to this page up here, and then I would basically just have a look and I'd add, a, I'd add an EQ onto every one of these. Like this one, for example, I could just neaten it up a bit. So if I just use Ableton Live's EQ8 on track three, um, just close that to give us more space. And then I, we can basically see to do much here you've got some nice sort of fluffy sample rate reduction going up at the top end and then this, if there's anything else in the track like for example where I, so I'd listen to it through again and then if there's anywhere in the track where I feel as though it's sort of so basically the, the bass and the and the kick so the kick and the bass I would add a side chain to that from the kick so it really ducks out of the way and it gives us that space you know for his drum to pop through drums to pop through for me um, I love this device and yeah so this is the Digitech series uh, thanks for watching uh, let me know in the comments if you want to know anything else like I said before and yeah I will see you in the next one